Right, well that's dried off now. And what we're going to do next is an upside down sky wash. We're going to do the reflected sky in the puddles. But we're not going to paint them one at a time. We're going to paint all the puddles together as though this was a river. And then at the end, we'll put the ground in over them. So here we go. We're going to be using phthalo blue, a little bit of crimson to make it a violet, and then we add some burnt sienna. And we'll get a blue colour, but it'll be a dirtier blue, slightly biased toward violet for the sky reflection. I've got that colour prepared. So the next thing we do is wet most of the puddles. Now I am leaving some lights in the lane because in the foreground in particular I want some light colours on the lane. But for the rest of it we just cover the whole thing. You'll see it when the paint goes on. So we add the water and then we put the paint into the water for a nice smooth sky wash. Now the sky wash is an upside down sky. So instead of being darker at the top, it's darker at the bottom. So now we're going to brush this colour in from the bottom up. It's very strong, as you can see. And I'm leaving some lights in the lane, just in that middle area, because I want some light colours. But for the rest of it, it will go all over the lane. Now I've got that colour in, I'm going to make it darker. That's darker in the bottom, and it's spreading up quite evenly. Now we clean the brush off a little bit and we take this colour all the way up. Well, not quite all the way up because in the far distance I just want white, white light, white paper. So just to make sure that this is really strong, I've just darkened that with a little bit more colour in the foreground. There you are, that's very dark now. And that's dark because the puddles are muddy, the ground underneath them in the water is virtually black mud. So we've covered most of the lane, but we've just left a few highlights and some white areas in the foreground. And now I'm going to leave that to dry. There, now just look at how pale that's dried. Always paint stronger and then when it dries it'll pale back to how you want it. Always compensate by adding more colour than you think you need. Well now we're going to carry on with the landscape and uh, we'll start to build it up all around with different colours. Here's a bit of burnt sienna. We're going to run this into the edge of the lane. I'm going to put some into that white area now because that's the, the light sun-baked mud where it's dry in the middle of the lane and that will appear later and uh, we'll have a rich line of burnt sienna running along the edge here. That will appear when we put on the overlying colours. I'm brushing water onto the edge of the bank in a kind of dry brush technique and letting that colour spread up. And we can work all over the painting very quickly like this, get lots of colour on. Now I'm going to brush water over the sides, over the banks on the edge, and we're going to put a little bit of shadow in. Um, for shadow we can use the, uh, the phthalo green and we're going to mix that up with some crimson and that makes a blackish green. So there we go, it's a blackish green. I'm just brushing them into the shadow shadows. I can refer to my drawing now to see where those shadows are coming from. The drawing's quite helpful because it's got all the tones. And we've got a nice strong shadow there in the foreground. And then that's running across here so we can pick it up on the other side of the lane. Crimson and green can make a very good black and they, they also make a nice dark green colour. Now I'll just pick out a little bit of texture in here, a bit more water on there 
and then we can put this colour in. There we are, I need a little bit more green. And just a bit of shadow, a little bit of texture here and there going in. And so nothing's too sharp focus. I can run some water across it and just blend it in nicely. Great, excellent. You can put lots of other colours in, just dash them about. Here's a bit of burnt sienna. And uh, that just gets the grassy wooded bank. Now we'll put some darker colour into the backdrop. So a uh, bit of cobalt blue, some of that crimson and some burnt sienna again. And we can mix that together and produce a brown. So here we go. These are the dark colours in the distance. And we can begin to paint them around this little farmstead here. And they just create the mass of woodland trees in the background. Before this wash dries here, we run some water in and that pushes the colour away and it can create a soft edge in places. In some places that edge is hard, in others it's soft. Where I'm putting water against it, it goes hard and then in other places it's soft focus. So that gives us the, the distant woodland. Here you'll notice in the middle of the composition there's a bit of a gap and that's to allow space for the mind to wander. As the lane goes to the end you've got a, a bit of a gap that one could imagine one would wander through and beyond it we can't see very much. The imagination will do the rest. So there we go. Big banks of oak trees, a little bit of dark going into the base and spreading up. So we just gradually build up the texture and the fabric of this landscape scene. Dry brush there produces the tops of the trees. There we go. I'll leave that to dry now.